Johnny and Dolly. The team is supported by ableauctions.ca. Closing your business? We can help. And King of Floors, your vinyl, laminate, and engineered flooring superstore. Just ahead of uh, Jeff Patterson, all guests on this Friday, brought to you by Langley Chrysler. They have the vehicle for your next summer adventure, whether you need a Jeep for the beach or a Ram for the fam, you can save up to 12 grand online or online, uh, on land rather, at langleychrysler.com. Um, we're getting a lot of this into the Langley, uh, the Delaney's OK Tyron Langley inbox. Hey boys, Edler leaving clears the way for? OEL. Oliver Ekman Larson. I don't see that. Hey, you know what though? Hold it a second. Edler six millions off the books. Now you got some money to if you if you want them. Well, you still have to give up All assets. Side, That's the problem. It's not like it's hey, you're going to get them Arizona's for trying to get rid of a real bad contract in their eyes. But Ekman Larkin, Larson Canucks can still play. Canucks have a few of those already. Does, yeah, that's just in. Larson can still play if the Canucks like him. You, you make a good point. Let's bring in Jeff Patterson. Jeff, thanks for doing this uh, again. How are you, sir? Uh, I'm doing well, guys. Jeff from Sakaris and Price, uh, by the way. Uh, your reaction to the news, Alex Hedler is uh, hitting the open market. Yeah, I mean, if this is the end of an era, I mean, it's been a remarkable run for him. He's been an incredible Vancouver Canuck. You guys have discussed that already on the program. Uh, now, some of this can be negotiation, but uh, listening to Mark Stowe, you know, I mean, he left the door open to come back to the Canucks. But as he said, if you wait long in this business, you know, that money can easily be snapped up by somebody else and there may not be money uh, for Edler if they circle back. So it does sort of feel like uh, a door is closing here. And uh, you've already mentioned the you know, final tie to the 2011 team. So it really is the, the end of an era if, in fact, he is out the door. Uh, I can't help but think, you know, when you were talking about it, it's good news and it might mean an opportunity for somebody else, uh, it probably is a good news day for a guy like Jack Rathbone because mm-hmm. this would seem like the Canucks are, you know, paving a way for him to be an everyday National Hockey Leaguer now. And so that part's exciting. But, you know, just my thoughts are 15 years of a player drafted and developed uh, who wore the uniform proudly, played, you know, on probably the best Canuck team of all time. And, uh you know, if this is it, I, I quite frankly, I, it's hard for me to envision Alex Edler in another uniform, but uh, certainly sounds like he's going to explore his options here and uh, wants to continue playing in the National Hockey League. So it uh, looks like he's going to have to find a new hockey home. So a bit of a, I, I, you know, I try not to get uh, emotionally involved mm. in this kind of stuff, but uh, there's an element of, of sadness that is just the, the turning of a page for a guy who has been an absolute all-time Vancouver Canuck. Yeah, it would have been nice to see him get his 100th career goal uh, uh, with the Canucks. No goals uh, last season, so he's stuck on 99. Uh, uh, just under 21 minutes a game, ice time this past season. Jeff, how much game do you think Alex Hedler at 35 has left? Yeah, and I wouldn't get uh, too worried right now, Don, about missing his 100th goal because, as many people have pointed out on Twitter, it, it's bound to happen against the Canucks at Rogers yes. Arena, isn't it? Good point. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> That's just sort of the, the cosmic way of the universe when it mm-hmm. comes to uh, uh, milestone goals for players uh, in games against the Vancouver Canucks. You know, I, I think he's got game left, but we have talked for weeks about, you know, should they be bringing him back? And my concern always is, the speed of the game for a guy that's going to be 36 uh, at some point here in this next season. And, you know, we've seen it unfold the last couple of years before our eyes, just far too many penalties. And a lot of them have been stick fouls, hooking and holding. And, and, and you know, because he has trouble keeping up uh, with guys in open ice. Uh, but, you know, I mean, he's got an incredible mind for the game. I think he's able to use that to, to his advantage as uh, the years have worn on here. And we've also seen the way Travis Green has continued to put him in, uh, you know, difficult, difficult situations uh, as far as penalty killing. I mean, still, uh, you know, the, has been uh, the Canucks' lead dog when it comes to penalty killing and big minutes and then those types of situations. And so, you know, if he is now in a position to handpick his landing spot, and I do hope, you know, if in fact the door is closed here and he moves on, I do hope that he puts himself in a position to really take a run at the Stanley Cup because he's had that chance at deadlines before and has elected to use the trade protection that he had bargained for. You know, it it would 
I, I'd have trouble sort of accepting the decision if I find that he's chasing money at this stage no. and just going to a middle of the pack team. Like this opportunity is presenting itself now. Uh, I hope that he realizes as the clock winds down on his terrific career that you know he's now in the driver's seat to go and find a, a, a soft landing spot for a team uh, that really can take a legitimate run at the Stanley Cup. So I think there's still game in Alec Dedler uh, in the right position, and I think he's setting himself up now to to find that sweet spot where you know he's not going to be relied on to be probably a top three guy, but uh, more of a depth defenseman on a really good hockey club. And I think that there's uh, value to be found in a, in a player like that. So, Jeff, uh, Canucks very aggressive now, uh, working the uh, phones on the trade front. Uh, we're hearing names like Zach Hyman, Jaden Schwartz. Uh, it, you know, I was told last week they're looking for two top nine pieces. Uh, when you hear names like Hyman and Schwartz, what do you think? I think they're the kind of players that the Canucks could absolutely use, but I just, you know, I, I'm still having trouble until I see them make these moves to clear the cap space. I just don't know how. Uh, they can be uh, those guys are going to be uh, sought after. They already are. Obviously, the Hyman camp has given uh, the Leafs have given the Hyman camp permission to go and, and shop him and talk to other teams. And you saw yesterday. I mean, there were a long list of teams. Would be, and why wouldn't you be interested in a player like that? You know, this guy is versatile. Uh, he was one of the Leafs' top penalty killers. Uh, put up nice offensive numbers. Plays up and down the lineup. Like there is a ton to like in that player. But at 29. He's going to be looking for a long-term commitment. And we already heard that uh, eight years and five per wasn't going to be enough for the Leafs to retain its services. So I just don't know how the Canucks get in on on that kind of player at this point in time. But, you know, if you're sort of drawing up the ideal kinds of players that the Vancouver Canucks could use to, to help them, I, I think Zach Hyman meets the needs and checks off a ton of boxes. I just don't know how... Uh, you're going to go about that. But, uh, you know, really curious to see and hear uh, your reporting, Rick, about uh, how much interest there is in, in Braden Holtby out there. So, you know, all of a sudden, if Edler's gone and if they somehow are able to get off the Holtby contract and we don't know about Nate Schmidt, like, you know, there may be some opportunities to free up sizable cap space and then maybe they do get in on some of these uh, high price free agents. But uh, right now, you know, you, you can't run before you walk. And, and walking for the Canucks is clearing up cap space to be able to be as aggressive as Jim Benning has stated that uh, he wants to be. So let's go back to the blue line. For, <clears throat> forgot to talk about Hamannick. Uh, they, they have talked to his agent. It, t- talks are quiet right now. But I would assume Hamannick's stock is going up in Vancouver with Edler gone now. Uh, what are your thoughts on getting uh, Hamannick back? Yeah, I mean, I, I just in terms of, you know, Hamannick versus Edler, I was never in favor. I think I said that on your show, both of them back, because to me that doesn't represent improvement for the hockey club. It's bringing back more of the same, and the status quo wasn't good enough and, and wouldn't be good enough moving forward. But if you're looking to change things up and bring in other faces, uh, but you want to bring back a guy like Hamannick, I think the hockey club liked Hamannick. I think they liked him a lot more after his injury when he got back uh, sort of the middle of the season there up until COVID hit, played some of his best hockey. And I think we saw, you know, that there's still a fair bit of game in him. And well, he's five years younger than Alex Edler. So if you're looking at a piece that can play this season, you maybe get him on a couple-year deal. You know, I, I think that there's still uh, some real usefulness in a, in a player like Travis Hamannick for the next couple of seasons. And so I think, for me, that's a better fit for this organization where it is in its competitive arc and, you know, trying to move forward here and, and put the right pieces in place. So, uh, again, a right shot, that just kind of adds a premium to it. He's familiar with the organization. You know, he's not going to come back on the deal that they got him. They got him on a sweetheart deal because uh, he wanted to play in Western Canada. He was late to the party last year signing just before the COVID trading camp. You know, he's going to get a raise, but I still think you can probably get him on a manageable contract. So uh, if Edler's out of the way, then, yeah, I, I would think that that makes a lot of sense for the Vancouver Canucks to pursue Travis Hammond. I can see if they can't get him done and back in the fold. 